Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. We, uh, this is being recorded on Sunday afternoon. It's uh, Father's Day. And for many out there, this I pray that this is you're having a wonderful day to all the fathers out there, especially the godly fathers uh, that are joining us this evening. And, and I hope you're just having a wonderful day. Uh, we are continuing our look at Psalm, the book of Psalms, and we are in Psalm chapter 6. So I invite you to go ahead this morning, or this afternoon rather, and, and go ahead and open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 6, and we'll begin there in just a moment. Uh, we want to say a couple of things about our services here at Shiloh. Uh, remember, you can join us in person, live, um, in person worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. And then we have our live stream only on Facebook and YouTube on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Uh, also, we started this morning uh, streaming on YouTube our worship service. Uh, you can join that live or you can go back and watch it. If you, uh, For those, if you know someone you're watching right now on Facebook and you know someone who doesn't have Facebook but they do have access to the Internet, tell them to go to YouTube. Uh, type in Shiloh Church of Christ, Green Hill, Alabama, and uh, you may have to look for it a little bit, but you'll see uh, the, the the Shiloh uh, emblem there that's in the corner of the screen, uh, that S. Uh, you'll see that, and uh, if you'll just tap that, subscribe to it, you should be getting, uh, every time we go live, you should get a, a notification. Uh, so if you're watching uh, if, or if you, rather, if you know someone who's not on Facebook, but they still want to see our live stream, uh, either Sunday morning or Wednesday night, eventually, once I get the hang of YouTube uh, myself, I'll be uploading uh, these uh, Bible classes onto our YouTube page, and you can go back and view them there. So for those that you may know that do not have Facebook, uh, go ahead and let them know about our YouTube channel. Again, Shallow Church of Christ, Green Hill, Alabama. Uh, you look for this S here, and and you'll be able to see, uh, find our uh, YouTube channel, if you will. So, uh, Wes did a great job this morning uh, speaking to us about uh, godly fathers. Uh, so if you didn't have a chance to watch, watch our worship service this morning, uh, go back, scroll down uh, here on Facebook, and watch it. Wes had an amazing uh, sermon there on fathers. But let's go ahead and dive into the Bible. And let's look at Psalm chapter 6, 10 verses here. Uh, this is a, uh, a psalm of a repentance, if you will. And so uh, um, my Bible in, in the very, the, the note, I guess, the man-made man uh, heading for this chapter says a prayer of faith in a time of distress. Uh, but I, I would rather call this a psalm of repentance. And you're going to see David's repentance here. So let's go ahead and, and start off verse 1 of Psalm chapter 6. David writes, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. David knew he had sinned against God, and he wants to make it right. He, he knows that he sinned against God, but he, he still knows, hey, I need to make this right with God. Remember, David is, is quoted in Acts chapter 13 around verse 22 as a, as a man after God's own heart. Here is a man after God's own heart who still messes up. He still misses the mark from time to time. Oh, we do that ourselves. We as Christians who have who are already obeyed the gospel, we've done the things that the Bible has said that we must do to become a Christian. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we're going not going to to mess up from time to time. It means that we're still trying our dead level best to please God. But we're going to mess up. Even David here, a man after, as the Bible says, a man after God's own heart, still messed up. But he didn't just continue on messing up and going on about his life. He realized he had messed up and he wanted to fix it. He wanted to do what was right 
to to get back being the man after God's own heart. He knew that sin would separate him from God, but that he, that he had to come back. And the only way a, a Christian can come back to God when they fall is sin. We have to remember as Christians, uh, we're not going to be sinless, but we should sin less. And that, that's a, a big difference between being sinless and sinning less. We'll never be sinless. We'll never be perfect. When we fall, we must repent. There's not such a thing as, as once saved, always saved. That's hogwash. David, David was in a, a covenant relationship with God, being a Jew in the, under the Old Testament. But when he sinned, he knew he had to repent of it, just as the New Testament tells us as Christians, when we sin, we must repent of it. He asked God in verse 2, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. Lord, don't do what I deserve. Don't give me what I deserve. Have mercy on me. Withholding justice due. Withholding uh, punishment due. Lord, don't give me what I deserve. Don't give me the punishment that I deserve. Withhold it. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. I'm weak. Remember what Jesus told the, the three apostles, Peter, James, and John, as he is about to enter in the Garden of Gethsemane in Mark chapter 14, around uh, verse 38. He says, stay here, pray. Pray that you're not you know, led into temptation. Why? He said, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. David says, oh Lord, have mercy on me, for I am weak. I'm weak, oh Lord. Uh, you know, it wonders, you know, makes me wonder is could could possibly part of what David is saying here, part, part of, of the repentance, repentance is because, because of what he did with Bathsheba. Bathsheba. He had a moment of, of physical weakness. And he gave in to that weakness. He says, Lord, just don't 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 punish me what I'm I I deserve to be punished. Don't punish me how I deserve to be punished. Why? He says, because because I'm I'm just a weak person. He says, Lord, I need your help. Lord, Lord, heal me. For my my, my bones are troubled. He needed a physician. He needed someone to heal him. He couldn't do it on his own. You know, Jesus says, you know, hey, you know, sick people don't need physicians. When he was asked, Why in the world do you sit with sinners? Matthew chapter 9 and verse 12. We need the great physician. Our sin sick soul needs the great physician. We need Christ. He says in verse 3, My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? How long will it be before, before this guilt leaves me, O Lord? How long? You know, I've heard it said before, and I heard a sermon years ago, and I've preached a sermon also that's called The Hardest Person to Forgive. You know who the hardest person to forgive is? It's ourselves. You know, God, when, when, we, when we repent of our sins as Christians or, when we, or, or either as soon as we obey the gospel, at that moment in time, God forgets our sins. He forgives them and forgets them. They're gone. Done away with. But who, remember them, who remembers our sins? We do. You know, I, I look back and, and I am just as guilty as the next person. Probably do it more than I ought to. I know I do it more than I ought to. I ask myself many times, I cannot believe, or I'll, I'll be on to myself, I can't believe I did this in the past. Back when I was unfaithful to the Lord, back when I wouldn't, didn't care about God, back before I, I thought I was ten foot tall and bulletproof, and all I was out to do was satisfy my own self. I think, how can God forgive me? 
and then I must remember. How? Because he said he would. Here David is holding this guilt and he's going, How long, God? How long, O oh Lord? My soul is troubled, uh, but you, O oh Lord, how long? How long are you troubled? Obviously not long. Once you repent, he's no longer troubled by it. He's troubled by it when, when we're in this sin and we're, we're, we are refusing to repent of it. But he says, How long, Lord, am I going to be troubled by it also? Here is the forgiveness God that David wants, verse 4 and 5. Return, O Lord. Deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? Grant me, God, he says. Grant me this forgiveness before it's too late. Once I die, I, I know I cannot get this forgiveness. I wonder sometimes how many times people in, in their 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 thinking of uh, of how their life is going. If they think, well, I don't need God now. I've got all the time in the world to become a Christian. I'll become a Christian sometime before I die. Folks, we're not promised tomorrow. I know many, many people who do it day in and day out. They keep putting off becoming a Christian knowing that they have to. That's the only way to get to heaven is becoming a Christian the way the Bible says to become a Christian. And they keep putting it off. Because they're young. Hey, I'm only in my 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I've got plenty of time. And every day someone younger than them dies. In the grave, he says. Who's going to give you thanks? Can't happen can't happen. There's not going to be a, a second chance after this life. This is the only chance we get. And it's while we're living. Verse 6. I'm weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with te my tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. The burden of his grief is, is making him age rapidly. Grief will do that to you. He says, I'm crying all the time. I'm swimming in my tears. You know, a lot of times when we're grieving over something, the time we really begin to grieve is when we're alone. You know, that's why you know Paul would say in, in Galatians chapter 6 around uh, verse 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's one of the burdens that we must help our fellow brethren bear is grief. Because when we're alone, that's when we're the most vulnerable. That's when we begin to think. That's when we begin to cry. That's when we begin to grieve. A lot of times, part of the, 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 the helping of the grieving process, and folks, grieving is a process. It's a process that's never completed. You know, I, I, I hate to hear people when they're grieving say, well, you know, why are you still grieving? Uh, that person, uh, that loved one has, has passed on uh, a year ago or two years ago or 20 years ago. Why are you still grieving? You know, get over it. Grief is something you never ever get over. Don't ever tell somebody to get over grief. Get over their grief. It's something we don't gr ever get over. We just deal with. And everyone deals with it in a different way. So for for that, that parent who's lost a child, for them to always talk about it, it's fine. That's how they deal with their grief. They never get over losing that child. For, for that person who's lost a, a spouse, who decides, you know, never to remarry, that's fine. That's how they deal with that grief. 
Don't tell them to get over it and go on with their life. They're dealing with grief. For that child who's lost a parent, they're always dealing with grief. We need to remember that. David, we don't know how long that it's been that he's been dealing with this grief, but he's dealing with it. And he says, all night, I'm alone. I'm in my bed. I'm I'm making my bed swim. Why? Because I'm alone and I'm dealing with my grief and I'm crying. It's okay. I drench my couch with tears. My eyes are wasting away. They're puffy. I can't see. You, you know, you know how it's how hard it is to see when you're when you've been crying for a long time. It's almost impossible. It makes you grow old quicker. That's okay. He says, "I'm going to make myself an an early grave because of this grief." Because of all my enemies. You know, is he grieving because of a sin? Probably. But then there's those folks out there that, like I just mentioned, that say, get over it. That's the enemies of your grief. And it it dwells on you. And it makes it harder to grieve because you're with people like that. He tells them in verse 8, depart from me. Get away from me. You workers of iniquity, those folks who are who are or who are helping you sin, he says, he says you need to get away from me. You know, if if you're in a in a friendship or even a relationship right now, to where your your spouse or your friend is helping you commit sin, you need to get out. You need to get out. That's not healthy. If it's your spouse, start teaching them the Bible. Convert that one. If it's friends, leave them alone. Find new friends. You know, I got put on blast one time because I I preached a sermon a while back at another congregation called uh, The Importance of Christian Friends. And (laughs) it was funny because it was a, 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 a youth night and we had several congregations uh, with us at that, that time where I was preaching at. And someone from another congregation put me on blast uh, at the end of, of the sermon. He got up to, to say the, uh, the closing prayer. And instead of just saying the closing prayer and being done with it, he decided to blast me from the pulpit uh, saying that my sermon was 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 horrible uh, because I only, I told people to focus on you know trying to find Christian friends that 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 your closest friends should be Christians and if they're not convert them make them Christians and and he put me on blast saying that we ought to have uh, Christians our friends in the world and all that stuff and and even in his prayer uh, he he blasted me. You know, folks, if, if I'm my best friend is someone who's out in the world and, and they're causing me to sin and I'm not trying to convert them, I need to leave them alone. I need to leave them alone. I need to, I need to hang out with Christians then. If I'm not strong-willed enough to, to convert that sinner who, who, who I, I, I consider a friend, then I just need to leave them alone. There are folks in my past that, that, that I cared for dearly and still do. But when I realized that I could not convince them to be converted to the truth and they were going to continue to live their life of sin, I had to leave them alone. I had to get away from them. And, and, and unfortunately, in the, the, it's creeping into the Lord's church. It's, it's, it's all throughout religion today, this love the sin, uh, or love the sinner, hate the sin mentality, which is a, a, a true statement, but we've perverted it to love the sinner in their sin and hate the sin. Don't try to get them to change. Still hang out with them. And if they're doing their sin, if you're hanging out with someone who's a drunk and they want to be drunk and they want you to get drunk with them, go ahead and do it because you're a good Christian friend. Hogwash. No, you're not. You're a sinner. If that's what it takes to to win somebody over, that I have to sin to win somebody over, I'm, I'm doing it the wrong way, folks. Jesus won many people over, and not once did he win them over by sin. 
He didn't commit a sin to win people over. Well, we need to quit doing it. That's that fires me up when I when I see people like this. And, and like I said, that that man at the end of you know he's a brother in Christ, but boy, he was looking at it the wrong way. And I knew that I just needed to walk away. Because if I was to say something to him, I, it would cause me to sin because of his his stupidity, ignorance in the scriptures. And so David here says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Get away from me. I don't need you in my life. Who does he need in his life? Look at the last part of the verse 8. For the Lord has heard my voice, the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my, my supplication, my strong pleading. The Lord will receive my prayer. Who does David need? He doesn't need those workers of iniquity. He needs God. That's all he needs. Verse 10, and we'll close. David says, let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Who's one of David's enemies? Satan. Who's one of our enemies? Satan. Let Satan be ashamed. Greatly troubled. He says, Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. Those who have, have helped me in this sin, who have, have hindered my walk with you, God, let them be ashamed. Let them turn back. They really weren't his friends. If you have someone who is, who is helping you sin, they're not your friend. They're really your enemy. If they were your friend, uh, they wouldn't help you sin. They would be trying to get you to do right and love God if they truly loved God. But they didn't. May, may I suggest, find those Christian friends. And if you have a friend who's not a Christian, convert them. That should be your number one goal. It is to convert. If, you have, if your friend is not a Christian, if you love them, you'll teach them the gospel. Find that person. Find that Christian friend. And again, if they're not, convert them. But don't hang around someone who's going to cause you to sin. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Thank you again for joining me this week. Psalm chapter 6, Lord willing, we'll, we'll start on Psalm chapter 7 next week. There's no way we'll, we'll get through all of it. It's uh, 17 verses. I doubt I'll hold you that long. Uh, but thank you so much. If we can be of, of service for you at all here at Shiloh, don't hesitate to give us a call. Take care, and until next week, God bless.